Hi, it's Carlos from RC Advisor. This is part two of my series on programming speed controls. I'm going to use this uh, Turnigy programming card for my example. Um, pretty much every, every brand and every type of speed control needs a different programming card, which is one of the problems. And this one, you know, looking, I've had this for years, but looking at it now, it's actually, it, there's some things that it should have and it doesn't, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But <clears throat> you basically need to follow the instructions carefully because they're all a little bit different how they work. But usually what they want you to do is to take this speed control and you plug it into the programming card and then you power up the speed control. So I have a battery here and I'm going to plug it in. But um, a lot of a lot of these programming cards, and including this one, also let you plug in a receiver battery right into the programming card, so you don't you don't have to be using a motor battery to power it. But I plugged it in, and it took about a second or two. But then it uh, it came up with uh, the the current settings, and you know, looking at something like this, this is almost a no-brainer to to do this because. Right there, you have all of the settings, and you know, plain English, and you can just go one by one and, and check them. And you know, it's got two buttons for navigating. You know, one of them is up and down, the other one is uh, left and right to ch to change the option, and then, and then you hit OK. It means program it. But I'm gonna I'm going to run through one by one. So the first one is break, and that's on or off. And break means that when you when you cut the power to the motor. Uh, whether you want a, 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 a software brake, meaning an, an electronic brake, to kick in and stop the propeller from moving. And I, I think almost always you want to have the brake on because, and I won't get into all the details, but actually if you have the propeller windmilling, you know, which means that it's just kind of turning with the air hitting it, that actually causes more drag on the airplane. So. Um, I guess it can be handy if you if you have a, a model that uh, is very slippery and, and you, you want to come in for a landing and, and have the propeller help you slow down. I, I you know I so I suppose that there's some cases where you will want that, but almost all of the time you want the brake to be on because that's gonna just help the model fly better. The second option here is the battery type and it's it's got nickel, cadmium and lithium lithium ion polymer of course you know you want uh, lithium ion now what is what is missing and it really sh should have this is a setting for telling it the number of cells and it used to be like in the case here the speed controls they try to be smart and they, they assume okay the battery pack is fully charged I know it's a, a lithium polymer and if the voltage is about 9 volts it's got to be 3 cells well, the problem is, and this this is this gets to be a real issue when you have a battery pack with a lot of cells. You know, if you have like a five cell battery pack, then if, if the battery pack is just a little bit discharged, it's very easy for the speed control to get confused, and and, it, and all of a sudden it will start saying, "Oh, okay, it's a four cell battery pack." Well, no, it's really a five cell that's not fully charged. So, um, you know, when you only have two or three cells. Again, it's not as big of a deal, I suppose. But if you have the option of telling it how many cells you got in the battery pack, always choose that as opposed to an auto, which tends to be the default. Just because it's gonna just keep you out of trouble. You know, I, I if the speed control gets confused and it thinks, you know, again, if, if it's a five cell battery pack and it thinks you have that is that is a four, what that does is that it affects how it computes the cutoff and and you really don't want that to get all messed up because then you can really damage the battery pack so so if if you if you have the choice always tell it how many cells you've got because if you don't have a choice then it'll be auto and just be careful with plugging in a battery pack that's that's uh, discharged because it can confuse the speed control and a lot of speed controls uh, maybe most of them when you when you first power them up, they'll count off beeps. And it, so, so the idea is that you listen for the beeps and, and you're, if it's a three cell battery pack, you, you better hear three beeps. And if you don't, you got a problem. Now, 
Uh, that that's not foolproof because if it's a big battery pack, you know, like five or six or, or whatever cells, it's really easy. You know, you fly you fly this day in and out, and you very easily you, you just don't pay that much attention to the pips. So then you you're like, okay, was it five or was it six? So so that's a that's a nice feedback feature, but I'd be careful. Don't don't totally count on it. And and if you don't have a choice, then just force yourself to listen carefully to how many beeps because if the speed control got confused and uh, you want to power it down and try again or use a different battery pack or, or something because uh, you really don't want to fly with the battery pack having the wrong idea as to how many cells because you're probably going to damage the battery pack okay um, the uh, the next option here is a cutoff type and it's either soft cutoff or just regular cutoff I don't see a reason, you know, for most models, you, I will do a soft cutoff. Uh, I can imagine, you know, I, I don't know, maybe some 3D models when you want very precise control, being able to shut off the motor. Um, but I, I think in almost all cases, you want a soft cutoff because the problem is, and, and, and this one, this one, well, this one also has a, has a start mode, which, you know, has a normal soft or very soft, and I, I have it on soft of there too. Because if, if when you start, start up the motor and it goes to, of course, you know, you should have been doing this anyway, but if you move the stick all the way up and all of a sudden it goes to full power, you can easily break something. You know, you can break the motor mount, you can have the propeller come loose. I mean, all sorts of things, bad things can happen. So if you have the software on the speed control on your side helping you, all the better. So I, I always do a soft cutoff for, for when you're, slowing down and a soft start you know meaning the the ramp up just because uh, it's better for the for the equipment um, the uh, the next one is the uh, or the cutoff voltage that's an important one and I think the default is probably middle and that's okay but I will never make it low because that low for a lot of speed controls means three volts per cell and you really don't want to be doing that I mean you're gonna get uh, just a little bit of extra power out of the battery pack and and you're harming it while you're doing that so you know I, I always recommend 3.2 volts and if the documentation tells you you know what middle and high mean where a, a lot of the time they do you want to aim for like 3.2 volts per cell as a cutoff if, it, if, if the documentation doesn't tell you then either make it middle or high uh, you know it probably won't hurt to make it high you probably, you probably won't even be able to tell the difference in the flight time um, the next one is is probably the the big the biggie, which is the timing mode, and the timing mode has to do with the timing of the signals out to the motor, and a lot of speed controls, the newer ones, they'll have this auto timing, which is which is not a bad choice, and that's usually the default, but it and and you know this is one of those things where. My first recommendation is not to mess with it, but if you really if you, if you feel the need to mess with it, you know you really want to get a little bit more performance out of the motor. The only way to do it is to test the motor before and after. So you you start out with the default, you know, auto or whatever or medium or whatever the setting is. Go to full power, of course, be careful doing it, uh, and measure the RPM. So then power everything down. Uh, change the timing mode and, and, and measure the uh, RPM again because the problem is it is very easy to to make it perform worse and so if the RPM is lower guess what you know that extra energy is going into heat so not only have you just lost some performance but you're actually damaging your equipment in the process and it totally depends on the speed control and it totally depends on the motor so it's, it's not easy to know ahead of time what to do to make it better or more efficient. So you have to test it. And for that reason, I usually just don't mess with it. I mean, I'm flying for fun. You know, I'm not looking to get the, you know, extra 2% of performance. So, so but, but I think it might be educational to fool around with that. You know, try it and see what happens. Uh, I have in the past and I haven't noticed a big difference, which is why I think I usually just don't mess with it and, and, and like I said before there's an auto setting that's become very popular and I think that 
you know, that's, that'll, that'll be close enough for my needs. So anyway, that's a rundown of the more popular, more useful settings to change. And uh, till next time.